Good evening. As many of you know, for the past 35 years, Human Rights First has had the most extensive asylum representation program in the country. I took on my first asylum case in 1980 when I was a young lawyer at Paul Weiss. Since then, the program has grown enormously. Today, we have over 300 law firms participating in New York, Washington, Houston, and more recently, Philadelphia and Los Angeles. At any one time, we have several thousand active cases. Our pro bono lawyers help vulnerable refugees from some of the most violent and repressive countries in the world navigate the complex U.S. immigration system. It's an extraordinary partnership with the private bar representing an annual in-kind contribution of nearly $40 million. That's $40 million of contributed time. Together, we win protection for more than 90% of our clients. And in the process, we're training the next generation of human rights lawyers. Over the last several years, tens of thousands of children and families from Central America have crossed our southern border to escape horrific domestic and gang violence and other persecution. Human Rights First responded to this enormous need by documenting the problems, proposing policy solutions, and increasing our staff in Texas, Washington, and New York. Many firms, many firms in this room stepped up to help address this crisis. Three firms went above and beyond the call of duty, and tonight we recognize them with our Frankel Award, named in honor of our longtime board chair, the late Judge Marvin Frankel. Aiken Gump, Chadbourne and Park, and Jones Day not only represented individual refugee clients, they helped an untold number of others by joining with us to advocate at the White House, on Capitol Hill, and with senior government officials for policy changes to ensure that refugees and immigrants are treated fairly and with dignity. I'll let them tell you a bit about their work. When we first learned in the summer of 2014 about the government's plans to create expedited dockets for removal of both unaccompanied children and adults with children, we knew we had to do something. Chadbourne's involvement in the issue of representing immigrant youth is a long-standing one. Aiken Gump has a long history of combining individual advocacy with systemic reform. And it really was, for us, a special opportunity to bring what we were learning in the field here to Washington. Jones Day's always had a very significant commitment to immigration and to children. The number of children that came across the border really caught our hearts and our souls very quickly. But I will tell you that very quickly we figured out that the women and children issues needed a lot of attention as well. I went out and saw firsthand the problem and we were appalled that there was nobody to represent these women. The U.S. government had taken the position that none of these women had viable claims. And these are families that are fleeing the most horrific circumstances from countries with the highest murder rates in the world. Kids who have stopped going to school and attending church because they're terrified of being beaten or murdered along the way. Who have left everything behind and decided to come to the U.S. seeking refuge. I went to one of the children's detention facilities on the border and I met with this eight-year-old boy. I snuck in some Oreos into the detention facility and um, I gave them to him and he's sitting here telling me how he watched his father be shot and he and his brother were kidnapped and he doesn't know where his brother is. They were taken to separate places, his brother's four. And the whole time he's telling me this, he's looking at this Oreo, fascinated. And he does what every American kid does. He opened it up and started licking the middle of the Oreo. And it broke my heart. I just, 
watching him enjoy something so fundamental. The clients we work with, their courage and their resilience is humbling and inspiring, and there's no way to do that work without being changed by it. In the last year, it's probably been one of the most rewarding years of my career. For us to get the recognition, is, it's humbling, it's, um, it's wonderful uh, to get it, um, but it, it also says to us that we need to redouble our efforts and, and live up to it. We are honored to be partners with Human Rights First and to be recognized for the work that we're doing. The collaboration and the hard work of so many partners across the country at so many levels has really been astounding and is a testament to what can happen when impassioned advocates refuse to step down when they see real problems with access to justice. Please, please join me, as you already have, in congratulating these law firms and their pro bono leaders, a group of deeply compassionate and dedicated advocates. Maureen Shad, Chadbourne Park. <laughs> Stephen Shulman of Aiken Gump. and Laura Parcher, Laura Parcher of Jones Day. Congratulations. <laughs>